I'm guilty. I look back in the 1970s and think they were more awesome than they really were. Do you do that? Yeah, I do. Uh, when I really think about it, honestly, there were a lot of sucky parts to the 1970s. Some good ones too, definitely. I have talked about them, mm, but there was some suckiness to it. For instance, the technology was lame. Last time I checked, there were no Apple Watches running around in the 1970s. Nope, didn't have that technology. Didn't have these cool pistols. Reliable, accurate, tiny, small, compact, lightweight. No, only a few choices. And then you had this right here. You'd pull your car up, shut it off, and it would keep running for about three minutes. Insert cough. <coughs> oh, it's good, it's good. Nope, one more. Do you guys remember that? Old timers in TMP? I know you do. It was called dieseling. We had to put up with that a lot in the 70s. All the time. We had this piece of crap Oldsmobile that my mom had. It did it all the time. Didn't matter what gas we put in it. It would always diesel when you shut it off. I was like, dude, did you put high test in this? Yep, still dieseled. Yeah, here's a Mach 1. Pretty cool car. Junkyard Find was the name of this series. 164 scale, coated in track, dust, dirt. Now it's up for sale. Mach 1. Cool car. Really cool model. Great tabletop decoration. Lame sound effects. Sorry for that. You knew what to expect. You clicked on another nothing fancy tabletop review. You know it's going to be marginally acceptable content. <laughs> marginally. I've been saying that lately. Just joking around. Having fun with myself. Yeah, not great sound effects. But hopefully, hopefully, great information. And some entertainment. Yeah. I like to make my entertainment, I like to make my information stand the test of time. Through all controversies, through all comings and goings of the internet, I just try to discover truth about a piece, in this case, a pistol, and I throw it out there, melded with my opinion, of course, and I just do the best I can. And I try to do just that with this gun right here, the Sig P365, reviewed, mm, I guess about two years ago, something like that. And yeah, it was a glowing review. I loved it. As soon as I shot it, I loved it. And I recognized it was an outstanding design. That it would own the compact carry world. I said that in the tabletop review. I even used the phrase, I know, kind of cringy, game changer with the Sig P365. And you know what? I do it all over again. The gun is that great. It is that fabulous. But when I posted the review, cue the controversy. Apparently that was a dissenting opinion from other gun tubers. I don't watch your product. I don't know what the hell they're doing. And I like it that way. Yeah, I quit watching other gun tubers. I don't know, 10 years ago. I just do my thing, do my testing, use my awesome crew members. We come up with our own opinions, our own data. And everything pointed to this gun being amazing, the 365. But on came the hate. Oh my goodness. Nothing fancy. Are you on Sig's payroll? Nice. I'm like, what the hell is he even talking about? Have you not watched the channel? Probably not. No. Hey, nothing fancy. Sig's quality control sucks. How dare you review that positively? Hey, Sig is like Keltec. And on and on the comments went. And I stuck by my review. I was like, thanks for your opinion. Doesn't mean much. Our data stands. My opinion definitely stands. The review definitely stands. I won't change a thing I said about the 365 back then or now. Okay, and oh, by the way, I even followed that review up with an infield shooting session of this exact gun. Hundreds and hundreds of rounds shot with Wyatt and crew. Wyatt from Gunny's, a great American gun store. Help me shoot it, and what do you know? We didn't have a single stoppage. Everybody on the mountain loved it. And once again, quality, design, excellence, proven. Fast forward to present day. 
I went to five gun stores within the last two months. Last two months. And by the way, I am filming this during the pandemic. It's in full swing right now. And we have the ensuing economic, uh, whatever it is, catastrophe coming our way. I keep producing videos. But even during this time, I'd ask the guys, hey, what's your best selling concealed carry pistol right now, 2020? You know what they said? That's right. The Diamondback DB9. How did you know? No, I'm just kidding. Of course they said the 365. Sorry, I'm going to gloat a little bit here. Just a little bit because I got so much flack for it. I told you so. There, I got that out of my system. I feel so much better. Yeah, I, I knew it was going to own the market. Yes, it had a couple quality issues to begin with. Firing pin issues. I understand all that. I address all that. I told you SIG will quickly rectify the problem. This gun design is outstanding. It's going to emerge as a top seller in the market is what I said. And lo and behold, here we are. A top. Actually, from those five gun stores, maybe it's different where you live. Five gun stores. The top seller. The most popular carry pistol in America. Judging from that data, albeit a small section. P365. Boom. There you go. So, yeah, I just try to be truthful. Try to throw down good information with entertainment, albeit lame. Uh, I do that. There you go. Stands the test of time. And here we are with an update video. Not really a full-blown gun review because I did it with this one. On the larger version of the 365, the P365 XL. Ladies and gentlemen, golf clap. Woo! Woo! I heard from a TMP Patreon member, Hey, Nutton, when are you going to review the 365 XL? You know what I told him? It was so awesome and so well-timed. I said, dude, all our shooting is complete. I love the handgun. I have a lot of positive things to say. I'm going to tabletop it tonight. That's right, and I am tabletopping it tonight. Update review, P365 XL. Here we go, Nutton Fancy style. First question I have for you. Why would you choose a P365 XL over a P365? I will get to some competitive options later in the video, but we're just going to concentrate between these two variations for now. What advantage does this hold over that one, if any? Nothing fancy. Well, uh, let me backtrack a little bit here and tell you that I'm not a huge fan of the 43X, the Glock 43X. Yes, competitor. But I don't really like a short stubby slide and an elongated grip. Same could be said for the 19X. I've been very consistent in that opinion, and that's all it is, is an opinion. I don't dig it. Now, but when you tell me I'm going to get a longer slide out of it, I'm going to get a longer sight radius out of it, I will get a lengthened grip and more rounds out of it, and basically a well-proportioned pistol with the advantages of longer sight radius, maybe, it's a big maybe, slightly more velocity with 0.7 inches difference, eh, maybe not. Uh, I'm on board with that. I like long slide guns. I've said that in TMP forever. PPQ long slide, Glock 34, Glock 17L. Dude, I like five inch barrel versions of all types of combat pistols. I've always said that for the very reasons I'm stating right now. And, and let's look at the differences, by the way. So you have a regular P365, three inch barrel, and then you have a 365 XL, 3.7 inch barrel. Again, velocity, eh, probably the same, depending on your loads. But today's nine mil defensive loads, I'm not talking FMJs or range loads. They have such advanced powders in them, they burn quick. They're designed for barrel lengths like these. I don't think you're gonna see a lot of velocity difference. I'm not going with that. What I'm going with is what I said. Bigger sight radius. 5.6 inches, and this one is 4.85 inches on a regular 365. Now, in the big scheme of things, is that a huge deal? I mean, is that something that's like, oh my gosh, longer sight radius? It really depends on you and what you like. If I'm going for maximum concealability, which I generally do in LPAC, low probability for armed conflict, 
My daily carry choice, guys, and this is totally legitimate, is regular P365. But if I want to expand my philosophy of use slightly to maybe L, oh, I'm sorry, H pack, go watch those videos. I have a whole EDC update on it that I posted a couple months ago. High probability for armed conflict. Maybe I would take a longer sight radius, something I can shoot more accurately. Maybe I can shoot at longer ranges with it. Oh, and by the way, it is red dot ready. So that plate right there, you can take off. You can put on a Romeo Zero, a shield. There are different plates that it comes with. And you can outfit this with your favorite red dot, the ones that are compatible with the plates. Wish I had one on, I don't. If that's your jam, dude, it's got you covered. And then you have a gun that can easily shoot accurately to 25 yards. Can you do it with open sights? Sure you can. Can you do it very accurately? Mm, do you want the honest answer? Good, the answer is no. Judging by guys I see shoot at the range, even attempting to shoot standing unsupported at 25 yards, they absolutely suck. They are lucky to hit a pie plate. And I'm just being honest with you. I've been doing this gig so long. Go look at all the videos. I got almost 2,000 videos posted. Freaking A, man. I, I watch guys, and I'm not I'm not faulting them. I'm just saying it's hard. Unsupported, their, their groups are like this, off the table. I mean, it's like a 20-inch circle. Some. I mean, there are some guys that can hammer it. I ain't saying there aren't, there aren't. But generally, it's difficult. You put a red dot on there, those same shooters... If they're doing good trigger pulls, have good stability, good breath control, they might be like this. So it does have an advantage. I've always said that for my carry pistol, low probability for armed conflict, I'm not expecting to make shots, I want absolute lightweight, I want uh, trimness, I want all the things in rule of law. I, I do believe in carrying a gun, but I want it to be lightweight. SAWC compliant, as I always say. In that case, I take this one. Without a red dot. But I'm, what I'm doing is making a case for the XL if you're considering both guns. Like I said, red dot capable, that increases your range and your hit probability, more, more aptly said. Not really range, but your ability to hit at that range. That would be a good reason to go with a 365 XL with only a slight amount of weight gain. I mean, this is only 20.4 20 ounces with the flush fitting magazine. If you put in the uh, 15 round, the blocky 15 round base plate adds a little bit more weight. Yeah, and I know this base plate is not awesome. It's kind of blocky, kind of goofy, but guess what? The aftermarket is going to step in and they will cure this. I'll put this one in if I remember before that video ends. So you're only getting a, a little bit extra weight, longer sight radius, and red dot capability. That's one reason. Also, you just might like shooting the 365 XL better than the regular one. I'll tell you what, guys. Ergonomically speaking, this thing is trick. It feels really good. It kind of has, uh, in my opinion, better pointability. So it just points better. Is it the longer barrel? I don't know. Oh, and by the way, it's not just me saying it. Again, it was Wyatt and company. His crew helped me shoot this. And they said the same thing. I mean, we were shooting the Hellcat then. Then we would shoot the 365. And everybody, like uh, Josh was up there shooting it. They're like, dude, this thing is slick. It is just awesome. And by the way, these are guys with a lot of shooting experience. They've shot a lot of different platforms. So they're not noobs. Is that the end all take on the 365 XL? No, nothing I'm saying is, it's just a data point, but it's an honest data point and I think you can probably run with it. I do. Other differences of the 365 XL. Still has the same dust cover, the same accessory rail. Is it perfect? No, I'd rather just have a standard pick rail there. Here's the sights by the way. X-ray threes, tritium inserts, lime green outlines, actually like them i wish they were serrated back here though that would be perfect kind of like the heine straight eights are see how it's smooth right there whatever minor criticism you'll probably run a red dot anyhow so it won't matter <laughs> let's compare them against a regular 365 oh what do you know there's those serrations i'm talking about yeah i might like these just a little bit better just because of that right there. But it's not a deal breaker for me by any means. Now, ergonomically speaking, 
Trigger is pretty similar, but you may notice a very distinct difference. What is that? Correct. Rounded blade, squared blade. Which one would I prefer? <laughs> Again, I have to ask, do you want the honest truth? You do? Yes, we want the honest truth, Nutton. Okay, I prefer this one. I'm not a big fan of flat blades anymore. I think they're a trend item. I just think they're kind of dumb at this point. I know, they increase your reach to the trigger for one, right? So if you have small hands, you gotta bring that index finger more forward for it. Um, and end of things I don't like about it. That's really the main reason. I just think they're kind of trendy. But I do like this one as far as it pulls. It's really lightweight, it's crisp, it has a really short reset, just like this one. And I just measured this, I won't do it on camera for length reasons, uh, four and a half pounds. Actually, I got a four pound, four ounce pull on the 365 XL, an outstanding trigger. Yes, I do wish it had that blade, and yes, I can probably swap that blade in or get an aftermarket and cure it. I don't know if I feel that strongly about it, to be honest. I, I really don't. I mean, if I bought a 365 XL, I just run it like this. I got large size hands, so for me, trigger reach is not a problem. I can do it all day. Ergonomically though, the magazine release is the same, which is to say it's pretty excellent. Slide release is the same, takedown is the same. There is a difference between the two springs. This one has a compound recoil spring, the regular 365. This one has a single captured spring, the XL, if you care. A big benefit to a lot of shooters, and I did mention this before in its proportions, longer slide, longer grip, is you will have 0.6 inches more of grasping surface with a flush magazine in the XL. Is that a big deal? Uh, yeah, it is. For most shooters, it is a huge deal, and I hear about this all the time. Now, in this observation, I'm trying to represent what I have heard from my viewers for so many years here, and that is they have a harder time holding an abbreviated grip, whether it's a 365, whether it's a Glock 43, competitive option coming on table right now. So you have basically a two finger hold like this. Uh, some people don't like that. They want to have somewhere for this pinky to go. Myself, eh, I can deal with it. I don't really, I don't really care. Unless it's something really high recoiling, but generally, the form factor won't match that caliber. In other words, I'm not gonna be shooting like a 44 Magnum with a grip this short. I, I Generally, I won't do that, <laughs> nor will you. But on this one, longer grip, let's see where it matches on my hands, large size gloves, I do have a place for the pinky. And that's with this freaking 12 round mag in, right? Flush fitting, 12 round magazine, more rounds by the way, I did mention that, 12 plus one, 10 plus one, and that's with the flush fitting magazine on the XL. Let's put in the 15 rounder. Oh, all types of real estate at the expense of concealability. And again, this is pretty blocky. I think they will either do a gen two of this, improve it, or the aftermarket will solve the looks of this. Myself, do I absolutely hate how this looks? Mm, um, I don't know, it does look kind of ridiculous and it kind of gets back to what I was saying about the 43X, really long grip. Now it looks kind of like a 43X. Uh, it just depends on what you're doing. If, if you're using it as a spare magazine, which I recommend, who cares, right? Because you are carrying it with this flush magazine, then you have a 15 rounder ready to pop in. That's kind of cool. That makes a lot of system sense as I talk about. Uh, but first cool, Look at this, dudes, ton of grasping area. Even for you guys that have big, meaty hands, you'll really like the 365 XL, uh, whether you're talking about this grip or especially with the extended magazine in place. Okay, so that might be another reason why you would go with an XL, bigger grip, but you like everything else, like everything else. It's slimness, it's only 0.88 inches in width at the slide, 1.05 and overall at the controls and 0.99 width at the slide release. So that's a really narrow pistol. High carryability, as I've always said. The width is a very important dimension. And no, it's not the only one that gets it right. There's a lot of great guns, some of which I've shown you already, Glock 43 for instance, and a couple more that may make an appearance here before we end. Nice grip, 
awesome traction. You absolutely do not have to do anything to the grip of the 365 series, says me. It's total perfection. You can't swap that magazine release to this side if you want, but the other controls stay on this side, lefties. Same as before, nice big old extractor. Nice trigger guard, ample room. I wish it was flat and not you know, slanted right here. I think I kind of ranted about that lightly in the original review. Undercut trigger guard. Looking into the magwell. Standard. And that's pretty much features of the 365 XL. I've covered the main differences. How about shootability? How did it shoot? Nothing fancy. <coughs> well, I'll tell you this. Honestly, I used an ammunition that I found out later that was pretty crappy in a lot of handguns. And it was from Winchester. It was a 115 grain flat nosed round. And it had all types of problems and a wide variety of guns. And this was one of them. Uh, I was surprised because I hadn't really seen that before. I didn't think a flat base bullet would do that much. I thought it would be pretty reliable. But this 365 had a problem with it. And so it jammed quite a bit with that particular load. At the time, I was blaming the gun. And I was like, oh crap, what's going on with this thing? I clicked around on the interweb. Guys are saying, yeah, there is a break-in period for the XL. After that, it's going to straighten up and fly right. And I was like, okay. Uh, fast forward, I went out multiple outings with the same ammunition. It jammed in other guns. And I was like, oh, okay. It's a weird load. Some other guns have problems with it, albeit the Glock did not. I'll throw that in there. It didn't, just being honest again. But it was a weird load. After I shot it a lot more on more outings, the 365, and by the way, with White and company, we shot it a buttload. So we didn't have any stoppages at all. So I would just give it a thumbs up for reliability. There you go. I think it's fantastic. I think it's every bit as reliable as the original 365 and even maybe more accurate, albeit this target from the crew really doesn't represent it too well because they kind of suck. <laughs> Sorry, they do. This is Josh at Tampere. He's uh, at nine yards doing okay. That's okay. Uh, here's Wyatt doing okay. Doing okay. Now, it's at nine yards. This isn't seven yards, and they're standing out in the mountains. I'm not going to say it's easy. This is the best group, and he got a thumbs up. This is Wyatt. Uh, you might ask, where's your paper, nothing? Well, I was post-surgery. Okay, my shoulder was totally jacked. So, I was shooting, and you will see in the video, a lot left-handed. Or if I was shooting with my right hand, I was wincing in pain. So, it wasn't great. That's why I don't have paper. But if we were to remember how accurate the 365 was, and maybe I find an image, a target or something, I roll it in, it'll be like that. Maybe even a little bit better. More sight radius, really awesome trigger, flat blade notwithstanding. Uh, I would say the accuracy will, will be absolutely superb. Better than the other options I'll show you? Mm. I'll just say just as good. I mean, the other guns I'm going to show you, I can't say anything bad about them. I mean, in, in big terms, I can't. They're just fantastic. So, heck, great to shoot. Fun to shoot, comfortable, quick follow-up shots, quick reset on the trigger. I guess I'll show you that. Safety check. Right there. And yes, it is advantageous to shoot to reset on your 365 if you're so inclined. And that would mitigate this far forward trigger thing that I mentioned earlier. So if you just keep it here to reset, is it that much, or I'm sorry, I screwed that up. Is it that further forward? Not really, not really. So, I don't know, take it for what it's worth. I still prefer a curved surface on my trigger. I'll stick with that portion. Accuracy, excellent. Reliability, excellent. Value, I would say, is good. This is a more expensive carry pistol. They don't give uh, SIGs away. But here's the thing, dudes. Again, I went to those stores, and I, there was a guy buying a 365 right there. I didn't hear him complaining about the price. And, and that's generally what I see. When guys buy top-end stuff, especially a, a life-saving tool like this, in rule of law, without rule of law, guys won't really care complain about the price too much but if money's tight i do have some options for you i do um i absolutely love the xl i really do i would i buy one? Oh my gosh it, without hesitation without hesitation is it perfect mm, i mentioned a couple quirks with it i guess another one is 
you know, this magazine cannot fit into an XL. I'm talking about a 365 mag won't fit into an XL, of course, due to grip height, right? And I'll demonstrate, however, how a 365 XL mag will fit into a 365, but not the other way around. Makes sense, right? Of course, of course. There you go, locks back. So one-way compatibility is my point, one-way compatibility. Uh, to be expected, obviously, different grip heights. Um, there you go, couple corks, competitive options. What would you recommend, nothing fancy, if I hate SIG to this day? They did such and such, I hate their guts, I'll never buy another SIG. What could you recommend? <laughs> there are guys like that, by the way. I'm not one of them. And no, I'm not on their payroll. I've never got a dime from SIG or any special favors of any kind. Uh, all good team peers know this. How about the Hellcat from Springfield Armory? This gun is outstanding. Yeah, and I asked those same stores, how, how are the Hellcats selling? Um, they go, Ooh, okay, not great. Which really surprises me because I think the price point is better than, than these guns. It's less expensive, it's accurate, it's reliable, it's got a great trigger, it's got great sights, has good magazine capacity. I mean, why would the Hellcat not be just, you know, super, super popular? Who knows? Uh, the only negative thing I can say against the Hellcat is that it's kind of snappy in shooting, much more so than the 365 that has a very low bore axis. Man, this thing is just really clean how it recoils. Your mileage may vary, but for us, we were like, wow, this thing just can shoot so fast. Hellcat, still excellent. And by the way, it was shot the same day as this one. So these guns were being shot side by side. Everybody preferred this one. I'm just saying, they did. And I don't think we shot the regular 365 that day. Um, but the Hellcat is a great gun. I want you to keep it on your list. I think they did a great job with it. It should be more popular than it is. It is a competitive option. Not on the table, also recommended, is the Mossberg MC1. That thing is not selling. I think it too should be selling better than it is. Is it to the level of a 365 or Hellcat and reliability? Mm, not from what I saw. Go out and watch my review. I mean, I'm in the desert, I'm talking about it, and yeah, I did have some stoppages. I address those very honestly. Of course, we get to the Glock 43 series. This is a standard 43 in that very cool gray. I just love the 43. I mean, in my um, L pack system, like my messenger bag, this is the gun that's in there right now. But in other systems, like today, I went on a run. Dude, I was carrying this Glock 43. Not this exact one, a black one. This is a wife's. Um, I love the 43. Outstanding. And you can put, you know, the base plates on there, get an extra round. If you go with a Glock 48, you can go the Shield Arms SP15 mags. Uh, not SP, but S15 mags. They're like 40 bucks. And you, then you have a 15 plus one in a Glock 48. That's an option. And, and I'm going to address this because guys may ask. They go, well, between a 365 XL and a Glock 48, which one would you recommend? My answer is you can't go wrong with either one. I love the Glock 48. I love it. It's basically a single stack Glock 19. Here's a regular 19 Gen 4. Um, I don't need a single stack uh, uh, you know, Glock 19. I said that in the infield review, but I understand in some limited states, I should say restricted states, it makes perfect sense, but it was accurate, it was fast, it was everything we love about Glocks. I'm talking about the Glock 48. Maybe you throw the 43X in there as well. Uh, the only thing I would say is I would really consider this dimension. So if I'm not mistaken, the Glock 48, there's a 19, I know that, but it has the same length of dimension. I'm talking like sight radius and all that, it's just uh, thinner. So if you were to go between this and a 365XL, in terms of maximum compactness, I still think the 365 XL wins, but barely. Uh, the sight radius on a Glock 48 is six inches. It's 7.3 inches in overall length. Has the same slide width. It's 0.87 inch. This is 0.88, basically the same. And then it's about the same weight, 21 ounces. Has a slightly longer barrel, just like you're seeing with this 19, 4.2 inches. Okay, so either one would be a smart choice. I, I could be very happy uh, with that. And I'm talking if you uh, get the Shield Arms 15 round mags. 
which I went to check tonight, and they are in stock. So if you have a Glock 48, those are like mandatory equipment. Just get the shield arms, as many as you think you need. You have a very slim, basically Glock 19. Which one would I absolutely choose between a, a Glock 48, which the shield mag and the 365 XL? Oh man, I, it's a really hard call. It really is. I, I'm really not going to take an opinion on that because I love both guns. I really do. They are neck and neck and neck. Uh, it just depends. Uh, I think the trigger on the XL might be just a little bit better if you care. Um, this is really smooth and fast, but so is a Glock 48. <sighs> Who knows? Let me show you this gun by way of size comparison. It's kind of cool. Coming back from Tactical Doodle, having stolen it from me, we see again the old school... Walther PPS. Oh my gosh, we haven't seen this on camera for like 10 years. This is the original one we bought and reviewed. He's got the slide filled as he often does. I think he's going to make a video on that, by the way. So watch TD's channel. I think he's going to do content. Uh, Patreon guys in our live feed on Sunday, we're totally getting after him. Like, dude, get it going. I was like, I've been telling him that forever. So hopefully he follows through. But here's the old PPS. Let's compare it against the 365 XL. <laughs> Look at that, dude. And remember when the PPS came out, I was talking about how uh, compact it was, at least in terms of width. I don't know if I raved about its overall form factor. I said it looks fatter than it really is, like really broad and tall. But look at how clean and trim the 365 is against it. Really cool. Uh, I did briefly mention philosophy of use. I have been concentrating on concealed carry for the P365XL, Glocks included. Another interesting philosophy of use, and I may have mentioned this in another tabletop, is that this gun could actually, actually replace a full-size handgun in a lot of people's minds. And mark my words, there will be people doing this. They will not get a Glock 17, they will not get an XDM, they won't get out and get a CZ or whatever flavor, they won't get a full-size polymer handgun of any kind, They'll either go with a P365XL or a Glock 48 with shield conversions. And maybe something else comes out in the future. And here's the reason. Because this can do almost everything a full-size pistol can do. Actually, it can. The only criticism you can say is it does not have the ultimate rounds capacity. Like 17, 19, 20 rounds. But damn, son. This thing right here with the extended magazine, you're 16 plus, I'm sorry, 15 plus one. That should be enough. Remember, the old Browning High Power was what, 13 plus one? Yeah, so dude, my oh my, how have we changed in terms of firepower? 12 plus one in the standard Mac, flush fitter. I think for most people that is plenty of firepower and then it would be a great home defense gun. Uh, you do have an accessory rail, albeit it does have some limitations. Um, but it's accurate, reliable, and then you can carry it if you need to. So you could actually buy like a, a pair of 365 XLs and you'd be covered on all fronts in a lot of people's minds. To include without rule of law. They're like, oh, H-Pack, cool. I'll just start carrying these mags. Huh, maybe I need to shoot longer. I'll just go and throw on my Romeo red dot sight. It just depends. And, and maybe the 365 like I do day to day is a better choice for you. But I've talked very honestly about its advantages and its form factor with a very, very slight increase in weight. And you guys know how I feel about weight. That's been the mantra here in TMP forever. Lighten everything, please. Manufacturers started to respond. But dude, a gun that can shoot under two inches at, at 25 yards, tritium sights, great trigger, perfect grip. Uh, reliable. Whew. What's not to like? There you go. Thanks again to Gunny's, the great American gun store. Where's my sign? Oh, here it is. Cheesy sign. For the loner, which by the way, I will probably buy. I'm probably going to buy this from them. So I have it in inventory as a cast member. It really is, uh, I don't know, a standard setter. But thanks to Wyatt for helping me shoot, for Josh helping me shoot. Thanks to TMP Patreon members for making this gun review possible. Seriously, I get zero money from YouTube for this review. Absolutely demonetized. The only reason I'm doing it is because of TMP Patreon members. That's what I'm using now, but TMP donors, please join. Support the work. Buy the ammo, buy the gas, buy the food. Maybe put a couple bucks in my wallet for all the work. 
TMP Patreon members. Thank you very much. They will get this video first as they should, and then later on it will break on the main channel. There you go. Marginally acceptable content. This has been a P365 concealed carry pistol update. Nothing fancy project. Stay safe during the pandemic, and by all means, remain calm. Oh, by the way, keep watching TMP too. <laughs>